Right, this is Gender for AQA Psychology, and this video will be looking at cognitive explanations of gender development, and in particular, gender schema theory. So, what is gender schema theory? Um, now, we're, the uh, basic idea is that uh, gender developed through gender schemas. So, you're aware from last year that a schema is a packet of knowledge about something. For example, a dog is furry and wags its tail and has four legs. Um, we develop the same sorts of packets, pa packets of knowledge about gender, uh, about things that are associated with each gender. Um, and these develop gradually. So when we have a basic gender identity, the child will start then searching the environment for information that adds to the schema. So they once they know that they're a boy um, and have a really basic understanding of that me what that means, they'll interact with their environment actively and find out more about uh, uh, adding more information that they can to that um, as they play. Um, so initially, this is a very stereotypical and rigid schema. So they'll remember things that they've encountered that fit, and they'll forget things that didn't fit. Um, for example, if they saw... Um, a woman with short hair, they'll forget that. Um, but if they see um, a woman with long hair, they'll remember that. That's a really basic example. Um, schemas will gradually develop and get more complex and subtle over time. So they start being really rigid in that way. But then over time, as they encounter more and more information, and as they mature and get slightly older, they'll be able to um, they'll be more complex. They'll have a greater understanding of the subtleties involved. Um, when these schemas have developed, um, quite early on actually, they, they create these in-group versus out-group references. So what that means is your in-group is the gender that you belong to and you've identified yourself as being part of. So a boy will um, think positively of the in-group, other boys, and think negatively of the out-group, other girls. So when they evaluate them, they'll say less positive things about them and they'll say positive things about boys. Um, and then later on, uh, in early adolescence or late childhood, that understanding then becomes more flexible. They understand that gender isn't rules and that it's more conventions linked to the society and um, conventions that can perhaps be broken. Right, before we move on to evaluation, just a brief um, explanation of how this compares to Kohlberg and what the key similarities and differences are. So they're both cognitive developmental theories. The understanding of gender increases with age is the idea of both of them. They're looking at cognitive aspects that show um, how gender understanding changes. Um, also, they're looking, both of them, at how children develop their understanding of gender by actively interacting with their, their environment. It's not a passive process, it's not something that's simply innate that happens through their biology. It's something they're increasing their understanding by actively playing with gender appropriate and non-gender appropriate toys, for example. Um, but Kohlberg, and this is a big difference, Kohlberg thinks that children don't un develop an understanding of gender appropriate behaviour or start using gender appropriate behaviour until gender constancy has been reached, which, which if you remember is around age seven. So gender schema theory, on the other hand, says that they can start developing an understanding much earlier than this. Once they've got that basic gender identity, they can start exploring and start displaying gender appropriate behaviours. And certainly um, it's been remarked that um, gender appropriate behaviour has been observed much earlier on than gen when um, gender constancy stage um, of Kohlberg's theory. So that's really a, a positive of gender schema theory actually and an evaluation point that it, it explains um, why children are showing that um, those gender appropriate behaviours much earlier than the third stage of Kohlberg's theory. And then the last difference really is that gender schema theory doesn't acknowledge the role of the biological, it's focusing entirely on that schema, that cognitive construct. Um, whereas Kohlberg does look at how biology um, affects. It's, it's looking at the, the biological process causing maturity um, increasing in those three stages and so how the two interact really. Right, um, evaluation then. Research that supports gender schema theory. Two studies we're going to look at. Kuhn et al. Um, had a couple of paper dolls 
uh, called one Michael and one Lisa and took them to um, two and three year olds and asked them questions about them. And um, they found really that gender schemas develop at a very early age. Two to three year olds are still very young, um, but they were still saying things like um, girls help mummy and boys help daddy and things like that. Um, so they were showing really obvious signs of gender schemas even at that point um, and really rigid stereotypical gender schemas. Um, and then they had also really positive attitudes to the in-group and negative attitudes to the out-group. So boys would say about themselves something like they're loud and they work hard, uh, whereas girls would say about themselves that they're pretty um, or, or something like that. And actually um, they wouldn't then evaluate the out-group in similar terms. Boys wouldn't say that girls work hard or that girls were pretty. Um, so they wouldn't evaluate it in the same way. So that shows those three things which support gender schema theory really nicely, that they develop at an early age, they're rigid and in-group and out-group attitudes. Um, and then the other study that we're looking at was where they showed um, photos to children under six. Some were gender consistent, um, such as a man um, with a saw, and some were gender inconsistent, such as a woman with a saw. Um, complete stereotypes um, but what happened was they asked them tested them about them a week later and they found that those were gender consistent had been remembered um, and those that were gender inconsistent were corrected to fit the stereotype so if they'd been shown this picture here a woman with a saw um, and they were asked about it they'd um, report that it was a man with a saw that they'd seen so they'd sort of correct it so that it fitted their stereotype so that's supporting the idea in gender schema theory that you have these really rigid stereotypical gender schemas um, and that you forget information that doesn't fit with it. Okay, uh, on the other hand then, research contradicting gender schema theory. So first of all, Campbell uh, looked at two-year-olds who had high levels of gender knowledge and found that they didn't show preference for playing with gender specific toys. So that doesn't fit, that's more supporting Kohlberg because actually they've developed a, uh, a gender identity, they ought to be showing preference and showing uh, kind of exploring, according to gender schema theory, exploring gender through using, um, showing preferences, but they didn't. Um, so that's one thing that contradicts one piece of research. Um, another point to be aware of is that gender schema theory ignores biological factors which actually we shouldn't really ignore when we're looking at gender. Um, so for example, Campbell found babies as young as three months old preferred to, had a preference for um, which, whether they're watching a same sex or opposite sex baby. So it's even before gender identity is established. Equally, Hines found that young male monkeys like playing with trucks rather than dolls. So both of those suggest that actually there's something instinctual about it. It's maybe an innate thing um, that actually biological factors may be playing a part and it's not purely a cognitive construct thing.